Well, the album British Nuclear Bunkers, the idea of it came about um, because I realised there was a nuclear bunker, an abandoned one, pretty near my flat. Um, I, I didn't know what it was at first. I just thought it was just some kind of uh, kind of disposal area or something. Cause it was just a sort of uh, steel kind of steel and concrete box that looked like it was going to run down. And there was a ben bench in front of it where sort of uh, drinkers would sit. Uh, so I didn't know what it was. Um, and then someone someone told me what it was, and I kind of didn't believe them. And I looked into it, and it turned out it was actually. Uh, Camden Borough control for uh, all of North London should there be uh, nuclear war. So the interesting thing is it's kind of surrounded by flats, um, some of the biggest council estates in London. So I presume that you know the bunker would just be for the top people, Britain's top people, and the uh, the people in the flats would be used as sort of like ballast or something, um, an obliteration. So it kind of came came about through through that really. The story of the album is a story of people living in a kind of utopian dystopia. So after a unspoken or unknown nuclear incident or attack or some kind of Armageddon, uh, the population have gone underground in the bunker network of the UK. Um, communication seems less obvious than it once did. So people are learning to communicate on a subconscious level. Um, but the whole thing is that it's not really about, it's not really a horror story. It's about, it's about the possibility of people living in bunkers in a kind of utopia, as I said. Um, God has been replaced by um, a bit of silverware uh, that was represents Eric Bristow winning the 1980 darts championship, uh, which I think was in Stoke, somewhere like that. So it's um, people pray every second Monday of the month to uh, Eric Bristow's trophy. With all the albums I've done that kind of have a story to them that I suppose are kind of loosely kind of called concept albums. I mean, I don't really mind that term. I think it's quite funny. I don't know why it became such a bad, bad thing. I think it was because The Who put out a couple of concept albums and, and called things that they were operas and stuff like that. But even though they're brilliant, it somehow got a dirty name, probably in the 80s, in the kind of uh, post-punk period. Um, so it's in this case, the music kind of came first. Um, I just had a few ideas. For things, I was actually writing another album at the time, kind of more of an, a, a kind of acoustic album, uh, like a kind of Sid Barrett, Skip Spence, kind of thing. Um, but then I started fiddling around with various bits of synthesizer, whatnots that I had, and then the idea of uh, Camden, the Camden Borough Control Bunker, which I'd kind of got interested in came into my head and I just wrote a piece of music that was sort of based around that and that became the title track. So it was pretty easy then to kind of um, uh, work out this story because I, I just liked the idea of it being a kind of, a kind of mood piece, if you like. Well, the first track that came about was the title track uh, as a kind of, um, like almost like a kind of John Carpenter thing and it was almost, it was kind of made up on the spot, really. Uh, the whole album was kind of, it's almost like everything, it's almost like a live synth album. There's no, there's no MIDI stuff on it. There's nothing that clever. It's just me kind of, uh, there's not even any, any particularly clever programming because I don't know how to do that. Um, so it's me just kind of like overdubbing synths on top of each other, then kind of editing bits and bobs. So the, fir the first track, which just became the title track, which then became the title of the album. Uh, and the obvious thing to sort of, have on that was then was to uh, ha have this kind of bit beforehand, which was the sort of nuclear warning uh, thing, which I kind of cobbled together from various bits of um, BBC uh, broadcasts uh, and made it into this sort of like, and it's kind of a pretty striking uh, beginning to an album, I think. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's how that one came about. Then there's other things like the, um, the Test Card Forever track, which was a sort of um, almost like a kind of popcorn sort of thing. Because I always liked those kind of things when I was young, Popcorn and Magic Fly, those kind of records. Um, and that was just about the idea of a kind of you know when everything's over. You know, the only thing that would maybe be on the TV would be the test card. So it's this idea of the test card suspended forever, just sort of stuck, like when you can, you know, when your computer kind of freezes, you know, that kind of thing, and there's nothing you can do about it. I just kind of liked that idea. Well, the idea for the video uh, was was pretty it was pretty straightforward, really. Um, it seemed to me that what you need is a gorilla and a guy doing yoga. Uh, and then Sean, who directed the video, um, came up with the idea of the lemons. There's a famous kind of art film of a, of a, a lemon just being lit for, um, for, I don't know, like 15 minutes or something like that. Um, and obviously the gorilla, the gorilla can't be kind of peeling bananas, so the gorilla had to be squeezing lemons. Um, uh, and maybe, maybe the kind of, uh, maybe the, I think the idea is that the, 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 the gorilla and the guy, the yoga guru, are sort of worshippers, um, worshippers to the, to the, um, to the god that is uh, Eric Bristow's silverware. Um, but they can't find the silverware at this point, so the lemons, become the god. That's why the, the gorilla is squeezing the lemons to look for Eric Bristow's silverware. Um, I think that's, I mean, that's what it's about, really. Yeah, well, I recently wrote a, a cookbook. Um, it was called Outsider Food and Righteous Rock and Roll, um, which was just, re it was really an excuse to, to write about rock and roll. Um, and write about some old records that I liked and some new records that I liked uh, in a kind of very sort of um, free way um, and not within the kind of constrictions of, of normal rock writings. I think normal rock writing is really boring, that kind of, like the way, you know, the, the rock journalist language is just so boring and dead. Um, so I just decided to kind of make my own language for rock and roll, which is just a sort of over the top kind of thing. Uh, but then, you know, rock and roll is fairly over the top, and I think I'm probably fairly over the top, so um, that's how it came about. And uh, yeah, and so they, uh, they, it was a kind of self-published thing, um, just because I had it lying around. And um, by the time this comes out, hopefully everyone will, will have received their cookbook, because I've had to do a lot of, had to do a lot of uh, trips to the post office. <laughs> and if you haven't, I apologise, you will do soon. The next thing I want to do is I want to do some painting um, for a while. Then I've got a kind of thing um, lined up with an artist friend of mine uh, called Bruce McLean, uh, who's a, a kind of older artist. Um, and we've been working on something for a while, so hopefully that's going to come about. Uh, I think it's commissioned for next year. I can't remember if it's commissioned for next year or the year after, but it has been commissioned because um, it's taken so long. It's kind of like irrelevant as to which year um, it's for. So it might be 2016 or it might be 2017, but one day it will happen. So that's kind of the next big thing. <laughs>